Are oh, you going to talk first, then? We did one second. Yeah, I'm just going to give yeah. you a very brief yeah. introduction. Do huh? you want to full screen the presentation, then, before we start? Yeah. You good? I love it. I love it. Okay. Oh, lights down. That means everybody gets quiet. Hello, everybody. Hi. I'm going to very briefly introduce the games because that's fun. Uh, I see so many faces of alumni and people that I know and, and like. <laughs> and I'm glad that you're here. It's good to see you again. Uh, so thank you for coming. I think it's always wonderful um, when you come back and, and see what's going on. And I think you'll be, you'll be delighted by it. Cool. So you did it. You made it to the end. Today is the day. Congratulations. I know that it was hard. Right? I've been out around here long enough to, to, to bear witness to the difficulties and challenges of doing this, and you've done this. And so uh, major congratulations. Uh, so our first game, this is Heart and Core. Uh, this is a, a fun game that involves actually two different avatars on screen that you have to control, which is kind of hard and crazy and mind-boggling and different and creative. And that's what we like, is uh, games that are creative. Yes, Rick? I, I, I'm very poor at reading lips. Yes, thank you. Rick reminded me that I had, I had one job, <laughs> one job, which was to uh, announce the happy hour, and I've already failed at it. Um, <clears throat> but this is why Rick's here, to make sure I don't forget things. And it's at 4.30 at Ember, which is downtown. It's very close. And Fi is picking up the appetizers, huh? Yes. Not the alcohol, because that's on you, OK? But 4.30. That's when we're going to all party and celebrate at Ember. Don't forget that, as I have already done. OK, back to heart and core. So uh, this game involves two different avatars. You're going to see that clearly. Um, yeah, definitely some puzzle mechanics to play around with. Definitely a spooky vibe. Uh, you're, being, you're being chased and hunted down, uh, which is always an exciting mechanic in games. So uh, now what we're going to do is awkwardly transfer the one mic we have over to Peyton Ryan. I'm going to see if we can manage to do this seamlessly. You can put this in your pocket. And then I'm going to put this on your shirt collar. And then we'll be good to go. Have fun. Awesome. Hope I'm sounding clear. All right, let's dim the lights. All right, well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's been quite a journey. Uh, we started way back in December, really, and then we pulled through all the way to January. And it's certainly been a progress. And we've really put something together we're proud of. But before we get to that, let's look at where we came from. So when we first started developing, we started off with some different mechanics than what we have now. We originally had it where you would control our main character through a radio menu, and you could select actions. And eventually, we took that, and we instead went to given characters with like JJ could interact with panels. And we really had some interesting mechanics going on here, but they didn't really feel right. So we continued to iterate on that. And then we ended up with, we gave JJ a gun, and then she could do things with that. Uh, and further from there, we iterated and experimented and ended up with something where each character had their own unique um, adherence and what they were good at, and they could work together very well, trying to avoid different things like death lasers. Uh, and we came up with some good mechanics there. And some of the development of our action blocks, we started with, of course, white boxing, as everyone does. Here's one of our big buildings that we had a whole sprue of things going on with traversing up and down and left and right. And so we simplified some of those, took them out to, started adding art to them. And here you can see some of the development of that. Okay, we've come a long way from there. And here's some further development on it, more polish. And you'll see more of what the final product looks like with that today. Here's our original character concept. It seems weird that although it's been so long since we first concepted this character, she hasn't changed too much. And this is the poly model and what we ended up with. It's been quite a journey for sure. And our two main protagonists, again on the left is Kai, and on the right is JJ. You get to play as both of those at the same time, uh, which is definitely a unique mechanic that we were happy to experiment with. And here's some of our enemies that you'll see today. Uh, we just want to give you a quick refresh on what those look like. Uh, there's the generic enemy ram, great at punching. The exploder who'll blow up in your face. A flyer enemy that will shoot from you from above. And here's some of our original environment concepting. Uh, very different from what we have now, but kind of the same location. Uh, here are some of our initial piece work we put together. Uh, as you can see, we had some sort of a lighting style going on, but we really transitioned from here to one that better complemented what we were working with. And here's what we looked like at Vertical Slice. Again, we transitioned a lot from here, and we're really happy with the result we ended up with. There were some things here that were working, but some things that definitely weren't. And here's kind of what we have now, some of the scenes you're going to see today in our gameplay. Again, really playing with silhouettes and shape language to create a really nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
so without further ado, the only thing I want to do before we start our gameplay is I just want to thank a couple people in particular. Uh, first person I wanted to thank are all of our voice actors. Uh, one thing that we have been holding off on up until now is a lot of the narrative of our game. And so we've been waiting for is our wonderful voice actors to give us a lot of the lines that explain what's going on in the world. So you'll see a lot of that today, but I just wanted to thank them all here. Um, all, a lot of these are from UCF's theater program that we were gracious enough to help us out with our projects. So we just wanted to give a big round of applause to them and thank them for that. Woo! So thank you to everyone from that as well. And we have one person from our own team here as well. Otherwise, we want to thank Cassandra. She was a wonderful help, our alumni advisor. She was always available for us, always giving us great advice and guiding us through this process. I, I can't say where we would be without her. It was truly a blessing to have her on call whenever we needed her to go over presentations, to go over our process, to help us pivot when we needed to. She, she's invaluable. And so I wanted to give a huge round of applause to her. Anyone that's working with her knows how amazing she is. Next, I wanted to, of course, thank Richard Hall, uh, being our faculty advisor. He's been a wonderful help again, uh, always being able to find the things in our game that we couldn't find ourselves and knowing already what we need to do, never forcing any decision, but always, I think you might want to start looking at this and maybe think about doing something like this. So always providing a slew of opportunities to choose from. So again, thank you, Rick. And then last, but most importantly of all, I wanted to thank the team. Uh, it's truly been a journey with all of you, putting in countless hours of work. Uh, don't tell Rick, but a lot of the time far beyond 30 hours of work a week. Uh, and that is invaluable. Uh, the amount of effort that I've seen people put in, the amount of talent that I've seen grow over the process has been something that I've never seen before. Um, for me personally, I can't speak for anyone, but this will be a team I will never forget. Um, so I want to thank each individual. You know, we've had plenty of interesting <laughs> moments um, with our team and others. Uh, and I know it hasn't always been smooth sailing. Um, but I just want to say that this team truly is special to me. And I want to thank you all for all your hard work. And I hope this is something that you can all be really proud of, because I certainly am. So thank you. And without further ado, we will now begin our gameplay of Heart and Core. All right, no pressure. Hiding. No more warnings. I will kill you for this. You are risking the lives of everyone in this city for one spare part. I have enough rams to search the earth, enough missiles to level this entire city. I will pull the Thai units core from the rubble and rebuild this city over your corpse. I will have that robot. I got my Kai.
I gotta find Kai. That was too close. Kai! We need to go! The rams are breaking in. Yes, I know. They damaged my core processor. I can quickly repair you, but then we need to go. Wait, I found this. My gun! Yes, now you may lead the way. Who was that? Santiago. I hacked into his radio frequency, and he's sending out even more rams to search for you. Santiago? He runs the city. Kai, what are you doing? Let's go. I cannot jump. Right. I'll try to use my gun to make a path. Jason, where are you going? Traversing forward will lead out of the junkyard. Hiding out in the city might be our best bet until they leave. I do not believe that would be a good idea. Do you have a better idea? Kai, I need your help. Can you hit the switch by the gate when I zap the box? Attention. Mandatory curfew is now in full effect from now until 6 a.m. No, wait. Stop. You don't have to do this. Attention. Mandatory curfew is now in full effect from now until 6 a.m. Please remain inside your homes and use energy sparingly in order to conserve power. Your cooperation and compliance is greatly appreciated. Maintain order to help us help you. Please step forward and wait for assistance. JJ, watch out! 
Please stand still and wait patiently. We need to keep moving. We made it. Barely. You think you can stay one step ahead because you stole the ram's comms? Listen, kid, I'll be reasonable. You turn over the guy unit and I'll let you go. I'll even forgive you for being out past curfew. Stay out of the light. This factory is still in operation. I never went this far. I guess it's been repurposed for spare parts. Watch out! JJ, we should head back. We have already faced a lot of opposition on our current path. Just a little further. I see 
these energy portals dying. If it dies, so does everyone in the city.
Jacob, hold that missile for the departure. You will move over your head.
Thank you, everyone. Again, wanted to give one last thank you to the team. It was truly a wonderful effort, and we made a very good product. So thank you all so much. All right, shield your eyes. Cool. Well, clearly that game was too easy, obviously. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, but it shows you they earned it, right? And it shows you they made it challenging and tried to make sure that it was balanced. Um, so our, our next game, this one's called Blood Song. Uh, this one takes place underwater, which will be very clear when we start to play the game. And you'll see that, once again, you, you'll find another innovative mechanic here, right? There is uh, a, a lot of uh, r rhythm play and pitch play with regards to the actual way that you defeat the enemies in the game, uh, which is uh, unusual to see that kind of uh, incorporation of, of music. And, and song into uh, a game in a meaningful way with the mechanics. I think you'll also find that the world is very well fleshed out, excellent world building in this game, which is always fun to see a game that takes that very seriously and creates a place that you're eager to go back to. So, you all set? <clears throat> I'm gonna transition the mic over to you, Sarah, so that you can, okay. And put that on. Testing, one, two, check, one, two. Did you check audio off there, Adriana? Yeah. Yeah, do a Is this too loud if I panel? put it? Is this good? Okay. I also have this microphone, you know. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, join me in welcoming Bob Bong. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna test this out really quickly if that's okay with you. Oh wait, don't don't click it. Don't click it. Okay, I just wanna make sure that's working. All right. And the volume's on, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> gentlemen, dudes and dudettes, to our final capstone presentation of our amazing game, Blood Song Call of the Siren. I am so excited to present this today, you guys. This is, I mean, as evidenced by, you know, how we're doing here. But um, Ron kind of gave a great intro to it, but I'm going to recap it for those of you who maybe have not seen our journey thus far. Blood Song, in essence, follows our teenage rebel siren, Mari, who is the daughter of the Siren Queen, and she just wants to escape the palace against her mother's orders to play her rock concert. And she fights kind of rogue enemies and guards along the way, all to just, you know, continue to rock on. She uses her power of the Blood Song which in essence is how she can defeat these enemies by matching their core pitch to defeat them. So where kind of did this whole game come from? I kind of want to go back in time to, gosh, January, no, November, December? When we first kind of thought about this, Blood Song stemmed from an epiphany mechanic where we kind of thought about, well, there are rhythm games out there, you know, you see them all the time, 
but we're, we don't really have a kind of melody or a pitch matching game. So we toyed around with the idea of kind of using that player skill of auditory acuity. If you've ever played any instrument or been in choir, maybe when you were a kid or something, you can kind of uh, match the pitch or match the pitch down. And if you're really good, you can even tell what note that is. But I mean, I'm not as good as that. But um, so this kind of got us to thinking about, well, what kind of fantasy or genre or creatures we can include that would tie in with that music theme. And we came up with that sirens use their voice to call and, and lure sailors to their deaths. So let's play around with that. Now, this mechanic, as experimental as it was and as unique as it was, came with a lot of difficulties about finding our sound. I mean, who can forget in the cohort space being regaled with the sounds of ah, 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 ah. I swear that wasn't actually my voice. People think that was my voice. I'm recording. No, it was like an AI generated voice. But um, yeah, I'm sure you all were sick of hearing that after a while. Then we kind of pivoted to thinking about, you know, maybe just using an electric guitar and kind of strumming along. And as you saw maybe, or you remember in our vertical slice, it kind of just sounded like ee, 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 tuning a guitar over and over. And it wasn't really great to hear at, or hear, hear at, hear, okay. Um, and we finally settled on this concept of assigning the different enemies a musical motif that is a kind of progression of chords and notes that tie in with the combat song around that. It blends really well and the player Mari can lock on to an individual enemy as you'll see in the gameplay and denote which is the loudest note that she has to then match to defeat them. So it was really a long kind of journey here. And thinking about where we began, we wanted to kind of keep in with that theme and that tone of rebelliousness. Well, in fact, really, this whole process, our whole game itself was a rebellion from our, you know, amazing Mari character. I mean, as rebel as you ever saw it, we all try to kind of emulate her today. From the mechanic itself was a rebellion of like using sound and trying to match it was certainly a challenge for our tech designer and <laughs> programmers. And even just the notion of being underwater, the motion that comes with the verticality and the swimming and how far can she swim and all that stuff. And if you can recall, kind of the process of even just our swimming animation evolved from this to this and finally to this, which will seem way more smooth and beautiful in today's game. And so all of this, all of this journey that we've gone on to really hone our rebel voice, it essentially wouldn't be possible without my amazing team who came to good day and humored me and dressed up as rebels. And here's us right before we came on. So if I hear my team, just rock on with me. Oh yeah, that's right. So without further ado, we're gonna present our gameplay today. I give you Blood Song. Woo! I'm gonna walk over here. I mean, look at that hair right there. <laughs> Just look, she went all out. <laughs> <laughs> You deliberately disobeyed me up to your room at once. Daughters must obey their mothers. Now go to bed and think about what you've done. Sure. Like I'd miss my show for that. Sound checks in 10.
Let's get some practice in. Stop that. I said go to bed. Ugh. Let's get out of here. That's so totally punk rock. <laughs> oh shoot, a guard. Ah, oh, hmm. princess, you shouldn't be here. like teen spirit. Of course they locked this door. Huh. A music box? If I can match the notes, I can open the door. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> oh, brother, more guards. I need to take them out quick or I'll get caught. The queen Ugh, commands This isn't you. what I signed up for.
Super Sashimi. <laughs> you new in town? Come by my shop sometime. Uh, I'm cut off. Uh, you cut off. I'll cut you off. Ugh, why can't I get through? Current's too strong, sweet bins. Luckily, I know the way forward. Oh, do you now? Care to share with the class? No can do, but maybe with the right price. You look rich. Bet you can afford a pincher. Or I could blast your eardrums out of your head. Hey, who's the crab here? You could do that, but then again, we'd still be stuck behind the current now, wouldn't we? Ugh. Now, make like Sally and get those seashells. About five or so should be enough to loosen my lips. What's that saying about loose lips? Hey, you want to buy a watch? Very pretty they are, just like you. the dust.
that's more like it. All righty, sweet Benz, look alive and keep the tune. <laughs> Listen up now. The queen commands you. Come on now. Word. Nah, that was last week's password. Ugh, are you kidding me? Afraid not. Come on, just let me in, Gene. I'm almost on. No can do. Rules is rules. Son of a... But, I can give you a hint. I'll play five notes. Then I'll sing one of them. Just match the one I sing. Nicely done, princess. Here's another.
What do you guys think? Yeah, first one. I thought it was... Ah, that's the one. Woo! They're waiting for you. melody. Looks like I'll have to learn it another way. Maybe if I look around I can find something. I mean, it's not so <laughs> The checkpoint was just that way. Swim, girl. You're on in 30 seconds.
I'd like to call up every member of my team, starting with my leads, well, Adriano Diaz for driving, and my design lead, Ashley Cuevado, my art lead, yeah! Mike Ham, programming lead, get your saxophone, that's what I like. <laughs> and Nikki Barroso, my DD! That's right, and all of my designers all at once. Let's come on up. Designers, Austin, Tim, Reggie, Delwyn, Logan, Lil. Woo, give him a hand, folks. And my amazing artist, Amritha, Kaylee, Bailey, Amy, Hannah, Marshall, Marilyn, Nicole, Nicole. Woo, let's do it. Get down. And my programmers, Greg, Matthew, and Christopher. Yeah. And Rick, stand up. You don't have to walk down here, but stand up, our faculty advisor. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much. We're so happy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> We're good. Yay! I'm going to take a three-minute break before the other two teams. Yay! I know. Oh, my God. You did so well. You did so well.
going to jump back in. Are you ready? You ready? Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Okay, we're back. Everybody's had a chance to go to the restroom. <laughs> okay. So uh, for our next project, um, this game started out as a completely different game at the beginning of January. Completely different. And um, I think you're going to be very pleased and surprised by how much they were able to do and how well this turned out, given the massive pivot they had in the spring semester. Um, so they ended up creating a very hard uh, genre to play in, which is a, a deck builder that's also in real time uh, and uh, dealing with combat as you go. So there's a lot of moving parts in this game for sure. So it was very impressive that they were able to build as much as they were able to build. Uh, so this is uh, Deck Weaver, Descent into Chaos. And uh, this is John Robinson, who has the best fashion style I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's amazing, yes. Please welcome the Deck Weaver team. <laughs> All set up. <laughs> Should practice putting on the mic. All righty, there we go. Darkness keeps me awake at night. Devilish thoughts bring pain and strife. No more posts can change the lies. No more chances to change my life. So many reasons I should stay inside So many shadows I just stay in the light So many demons that I have to fight So many cards that I can play tonight And today I'll be showing you our game, Deck Weaver, Descent into Chaos. Now let's go over a little bit of the journey. Ron kind of alluded to this. Um, sort of a curse word sometimes in our industry, but we had an absolutely major pivot. Uh, we did a complete 180, and we did this after talking to every single person on our team, asking them one-on-one, -on -one, how do you feel about the current direction of the project? How would you feel if we completely restarted? And it was a unanimous decision to completely start fresh. And so that's what we did. Uh, this Echo Enemy model uh, is the only thing we kept from our previous game. So everything you'll see after that was completely done after the pivot. Now, we also saw this as a perfect opportunity to realign ourselves with our previous goals. For the start of the project, we wanted to make sure that this gave everybody the opportunity to have a portfolio piece and a portfolio experience. So I'll go over a few examples of that. For our character artists, they got to make a few enemies, including our Krovix up there and our boss monster. Level designers got to uh, work on four different levels. As you can see, the gray box up there and the finished project. Here's, uh, here's another one. And obviously, this was all done in conjunction with our environment artist, who got a good experience making modular kits for our, our level designers to use. Now, likewise, our programmers and our systems designer got to work together to create our card system. Our card system uses what we call card components, which are modular functionality that you can use to mix and match and make different cards. While this was going on, it was being iterated on with our card file. This helped us iterate, make new cards, and come up with the components that we need for the programmers to make. It also kept us organized, tracked progress of the cards, and helped with balancing. One of our programmers also was really interested in working in AI in the industry. And so they got the opportunity to work on a 3D nav mesh, as you can see, for our watcher enemies. We also provided plenty of people on the team tons of opportunities for growth and to expand their skill sets. For example, one of our TDs, or one of our programmers, started as a programmer, transitioned to TD, and actually implemented all of our animation blueprints in the game. This was something they had like no prior experience prior to Capstone. Um, but once they got a little taste, they fell in love with it, and now it's something they want to continue doing. Another good example is most of and some of the VFX in our game. Some of these VFX you see on screen were actually made by one of our level designers. And it also gave the opportunity for our art lead to be able to teach most of the team how to use Niagara and Unreal. 
We thought that this could be such a useful skill for people. You know, you never know when you're out in the industry and somebody's sick or you need to actually work with Niagara or a similar particle system. And now people on our team have that experience. So if the need arises, they'll be able to perform it. Now, let's talk a little bit about life outside and uh, after capstone. So we wanted um, to make sure that our product, our game, would sell the team. You know, we wanted to be a portfolio piece, and so we want to make sure that we can sell the team and how good they are. And we're very proud to have provided a platform for them to showcase their skills. Additionally, we help them have op the opportunity to work in a semi-realistic uh, team environment and also help them either work to get uh, jobs and internship, oppor internship opportunities or prepare themselves for ventures to hone their craft. Also, I'm very pleased to say that of the people on our team that were seeking a job and internship, more than half of them achieved that goal and will be starting their opportunity next semester. Now, it can't be understated, underrepresented, uh, the connections we made as a team. You know, doing a completely 180 pivot is a troubling and hard experience. And, the connections we made will last us a lifetime. Our team is such good friends, and I, I couldn't have been more proud and humbled to have worked and met with these people, and I'm just so proud of all of them. Uh, words can't even describe it. So without further ado, Get in the Box Studios presents Deck Weaver, Descent into Chaos.
Week and night, devilish thoughts bring pain and strife. No more hopes can change the lies. No more chances to change my life. So many reasons I should stay inside. So many shadows I just stay in the light. So many demons that I have to fight. So many cards that I can play tonight. Fair, fair warning, it's a very long credit. <laughs> Just so you know, two minutes. For some promotion through being involved as a hurdle and process. I can't stop to process trauma. Stuck in shock, but not in drama. Too dynamic for the crush. Just like COVID from clutch, even through the pain. It's too much. Fire in my heart for me to lose once. Singing I'm a Zai, you got me screwed up. Got a couple things and I get screwed up. Got a couple reasons they should choose us. I know that they gon' choose. I know that guy. So many shadows are just stay in the light. So many demons that I have to fight. So many cars that I can play tonight. All righty. Thank you all for watching. Uh, that's the end. One last thank you to uh, all those wonderful people you saw in the credits, all of our wonderful uh, contractors, and all of our team. It's, it was incredible. It was a great time, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thank you. impressed by how much you all made <laughs> that was incredible <laughs> yeah and then we uh, so th it was named after you yeah, yeah. I, I've been demanding that for a while okay <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny because you're like a beloved member of the cohort and here you are the boss monster cool so you're not denying I'm not denying okay. no <laughs> all right um, well we'll let Nick get uh, set up one thing to note um, in addition to 4.30 Ember Fias paying for appetizers, let's not forget that, is that your posters are out here in the conference room right across from this hallway. And so don't forget to go get those. Kenny will be helping to, to sign those out. If you forget your poster and then you move to California, it's hard to get you a poster. And so it's a lot easier to grab your poster now while you're here. So don't forget to do that on the way out. And I will try to remind you again to do so. So, uh, Nick, are you ready to get hooked up with the mic? <clears throat> okay. So I, I don't want to spoil the, uh, one of the surprises in this, this game by talking about it. That would be inappropriate. And uh, there's a reveal that the team has, has spent a lot of time trying to create. So I, I'm, I, I'm struggling to, to know what to say that doesn't ruin something in the game. What I will say is that this is a very uh, immersive and, and beautiful and, and narrative game. And I think you'll be uh, impacted and affected uh, by it. And of course, it, it'll speak better than I could about its own merits. Uh, you ready to get hooked up here? Sure. Let me hook this to your lapel. Thank you. Right. Are you sound checked, Nate? Uh, no. Make sure that you can hear your stuff. <clears throat> uh, one second. Let me get it. Okay. There's an alpha there. Thank you. Do a quick ding on it. Just uh, it's not plugged in yet. That's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. All right, let me know when you're ready. All right. Go ahead and pause that. Yep. Can you pause it? Uh, I don't think it's AI. Hey, just... Ready? 
So let's give a round of applause to the Cecilia team, Nick Niyash. Can I full volume? All right, go ahead and start up. Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Nick and on behalf of IFER Interactive, we are so proud to present Cecilia to you all. Cecilia is a first person platforming adventure game. It has a story that's set in a surreal environment inspired by the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. This game is very atmospheric and we'd love for you to be fully immersed in it. So we're gonna let the game do most of the talking for us. Please enjoy and let's begin. I just don't understand. If you love this toy so much, why throw it in the lake? I took her swimming. Not like you have time to. That's not fair, and you know it, Jane. I can't bring you replicas of ancient deities if I don't have a job. Do you know how many female historians- I think I see her. Right there. It's Cecilia. Oh, thank God. Maybe I can still make that call with Miller. Oh, how did you even see it? It's covered in muck. This is why... I'm sorry, okay? I didn't mean it. I get it myself, but it'd make you angry. No, no. I almost have her. on this mere mortal. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to head that way, if it pleases you. Are all the rocks here alive? Sometimes Cecilia's strength and size is really useful if you want a different vantage point. This could have been drawn by my daughter.
Thank you, Cecilia. Just like a baby, Cecilia is easily distracted, for example, by the mechanical fauna on the island. It's her own peril and yours, as your lives are now linked by the magical rock. Also like a baby, she can be quick to anger. As quickly as she may be angered, she may also be distracted by something new. The player doesn't always have to wait for the environment to do the distracting for them, however.
So, you like shiny stuff. That seems easy enough. Rock looks hot. But Cecilia can traverse it easily. What the? Here we'll jump ahead to save some time. This is where we would have exited the mouth of the cave and behold the lighthouse for the first time. Up close. Sometimes it's useful to tag along with Cecilia. to fun. Sometimes you're better off going it alone. This seems safe. Glad it's making that noise. That's a comforting rusty noise. Careful.
That one said it was a safe environment. Hey, Cece, can you help me out here? You stay there, and I go here, like whoosh! That's it! Yes! Now get over here! Okay, we've done this before. No big deal, no big deal. And here we have quite a lot of clambering to do, so we'll go ahead and jump forward for time again. A pleasure as always, Cecilia. Now, where are these people? Hello? Hey, it's okay. I don't like it here either, but we have to figure out what's going on. This, this is my, why am I? The only thing I know is that my daughter is out there, looking for us right now, and where she's looking is, so that's where we need to go, so she can find us. This will work, this has to work. Or maybe we'll drown, but I really think it's going to work. Ready? One, two, three! <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I thought I lost you. I know. And I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. You got Cecilia back.
to take this opportunity to uh, thank our absolutely incredible team for the monumental amount of work they've done. Uh, this has been a truly epic journey, um, and we couldn't have done it uh, unless we had come together as a team to do so. Uh, this is a product you can really be proud of for the rest of your life. So, uh, well done to you. Can you spot Patrick? Also, on behalf of our team, I would like to thank the uh, contractors that volunteered to help us as well with environmental art, with the voice acting and mocap acting. Also, our industry advisor, Adnan, and our faculty advisor, Ron, and all the faculty here at uh, FIA who helped us so much with all their feedback and consulting and uh, making this fine institution what it is. Also to the many asset creators that helped us flesh out our world. And finally to FI itself, truly the finest game design program in the world for making this all possible. had a baby born during production, uh, Michael Escobar, our development director, who is here today. Um, so we dedicate our, our game to uh, your beautiful baby girl. Thank you. Let's jump out real quick. You can pick up steam. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lastly, I want to mention um, we are so proud of our work that uh, we wanted to share it with the world. So we have gone through uh, the process of publishing our game to Steam. Uh, it is available right now as of uh, two days ago, actually. <clears throat> so you can go on Steam. You can search for Cecilia, spelled C-E-C-E. -C -E, uh, and you can get the game both on uh, Windows or even on Mac OS, and it is completely free. And um, on a personal note, my uh, parting words for you all, uh, especially to uh, our cohort here who may be leaving on new adventures or staying here, either or. Uh, life is um, really ephemeral, not unlike our story uh, in, in the game Cecilia. And um, I think something that our, our player character would resonate with as well is to find what you truly love and explore boldly. Thank you. If you didn't know, don't forget about uh, Ember at 4.30 and getting your posters as well on behalf of the FIA faculty. Uh, clearly, we have a, oh, thank you. Uh, we have a ton to be proud of you for up on that screen. That's just, it's so obvious. It doesn't need to be restated. We are incredibly proud. These, all four of these games were really impressive. And it's, it's obvious how much work you put into them and how clever you have been in your efforts. So it's very easy to compliment you all and gush. And, and so join us at Ember at 4.30 for more gushing and more compliments. All right, see you there.